So there's some confusion. What damages can you get under the FDCPA? So you sue an abusive debt collector under the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Is it $1,000, less than $1,000? Is it $100,000? Can you get punitive? There's all these different things out there. What is the actual answer here? So let me tell you what you cannot get. You cannot get punitive damages under the FDCPA. Now, you may have another claim, particularly under state law, but it could be under federal law. Fair Credit Reporting Act can get you punitive damages in the right circumstance. But if we put that aside, there's really two forms of damages that we focus on with the FDCPA. There's what are called statutory damages. We'll come back to that. And then actual or compensatory damages. And we'll come back to that. So let's start with the statutory damage. This is the thing that's most common. And this is also where there's a lot of confusion. And this can be up to $1,000. So some people say you automatically get $1,000 if you sue under the FDCPA. It's not really true. First of all, you might lose. But even if you win, you're not guaranteed to get $1,000. Some people will say that you can never get $1,000. Well, that's not true because you certainly can get $1,000 statutory. Here's the deal with statutory damage. It's designed for if you cannot prove that you have actual damages, you claim statutory damages. And it's basically, you could think of it like a penalty where the government says, okay, debt collectors, you guys are breaking the law. We want to incentivize consumers to file a lawsuit against you. Well, they got to get something out of it, right? Unfortunately, this hasn't been raised since like 1977. So a thousand bucks, not quite the same, but it is what it is. So it's basically like a hundred dollars to a thousand. Now, generally you get a thousand dollars, but the court's supposed to look at, was it intentional, the frequency of violations, a number of factors, and that's up to a thousand dollars. And that is normally interpreted as a thousand dollars, at least per defendant okay, not per violation. This is not like the TCPA, Telephone Consumer Protection Act, where we might have a hundred statutory violations and we get a hundred sets of damage. That's not what we get with the FTCPA. So that's statutory. Okay. Now there certainly are claims or lawsuits where that's all we claim. We just claim statutory damages because it really didn't actually hurt us in the sense of did it cause me emotional distress or monetary loss? It's really, hey, debt collector, you violated the law. I want you to pay these statutory damages. Now, the other form of damages would be actual or compensatory. It's called compensatory because they are to compensate us. So if you think about this is where you were before the debt collector did something bad to you, then it brought you down to here. Well, what would it take to get you back up, to compensate you, to bring you back to where you were? Those are your actual or your compensatory damages. Normally, we think of two types on compensatory or actual damage. Those are the same thing. Economic, non-economic. So what do we mean by economic? Well, we're talking about uh, a debt collector continues to call you at work. You tell the, the collector, I can't get these calls at work. They keep calling you. Boom, you get fired. Well, now you've lost income. Maybe it takes you six weeks to get a job. Maybe you were making $20 an hour. Now you're making 17. Well, that gap those are going to be part of your compensatory damages because you were actually damaged that way. You lost three bucks an hour. Okay. And so it could be that they put something bogus on your credit report or they were supposed to mark it as disputed. They did not mark it as disputed. And now you have lost out on a mortgage. And by the time you get everything fixed and you get the mortgage, instead of it being at 5%, it's now at 6.75%. Well, that gap. Okay, that's what we're looking at to figure out the actual damages. Now, it can get, I won't say complicated, we just have to think it through. If we're saying, hey, this added, you know, an extra 200 bucks a month to my mortgage. Well, over 30 years, whether that be 2,400 a month, 30 years, 60, you know, whatever that is, you know, 72,000 bucks, I don't know, whatever the math is. Well, it wouldn't exactly be 72,000 because part of that is going way out into the future. So we bring it back to present value. It's just a math problem. And say, okay, well, that represents, you know, $19,423. Just making that up. So there are some things we have to do with these economic damages to make them sort of fit the law. 
but it could be I lost income, I lost a mortgage, I paid higher rate on a car loan, on a credit card loan, on a signature loan. Um, you know, I because I couldn't get this financing, I lost out on this business opportunity or this investment. Now that can be a little challenging under the law, particularly when I have a track record. But the point is anything where we say, you know, if that debt collector had not broken the law, I would not have been damaged this way. Well, now maybe we can claim that as damages. And here's where we were. And then we were brought down to here. And that that difference, whether it's a dollar or a million dollars, it's our actual damages. It has nothing to do with the statutory damage. We don't care if it's under a thousand, more than a thousand, more than ten thousand, hundred thousand. We don't care about any of that. It's just where were you? Can we show that the loss occurred because that debt collector broke the law? If we can, then we may be able to get that money back as actual damage. So that would be economic. The other type of actual damage is emotional distress, sometimes called mental anguish. It's just the idea that debt collector did something to me and that really bothered me. I'm not talking about just a slight little annoyance where I'm like, eh, that's annoying. But no, seriously bothered me. It may be just sort of mentally bothered me. It may sort of manifest itself in physical symptoms. You know, my stomach is sort of turning or my heart's beating fast or my head's pounding. You know, I got headaches. Uh, I had to sleep more than I normally do. I could not sleep. You know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night worrying about this debt collector. Are they going to, you know, call my boss? Are they going to put that that bogus thing on my credit report? What are they going to do? I just can't sleep at night. Maybe it affects my interaction with my family. I'm more stressed out. Maybe I'm snapping at the kids. I'm not very nice to my spouse. Maybe I'm a lousy employee because of this. Whatever it is, it's affecting me emotionally. And again, it's the same idea. Here's where I was before. And then they lowered that. Well, they owe me for that gap. Not as easy to figure out as, okay, I lost my job, got one the next day, but I'm making $3 less an hour. I work 40 hours a week, it's 120 bucks a week, you know, figure out taxes and all that sort of stuff. But a jury can decide that. Now, we typically have a jury charge that we use in Alabama, and, and a lot of states would have this. It says for mental anguish or emotional distress, there is no legal yardstick to sort of measure it. Hey, jury, we need you to use just your good common sense to say, what is the amount of damage that the, the plaintiff, the consumer, has suffered? So let's sort of pull back and think about what we've talked about. We've got statutory damages that's up to $1,000. And then we have the actual damages. But we have two types of that. We've got economic. I lost my job. I had to pay more for a mortgage, a car loan, a credit card, a student loan, whatever it may be. Or we have emotional distress. Here's how that's affected me. Now, here's a tip if we're doing these types of cases. We want to be as precise and as solid as possible on these damages. So we don't say... Yeah, you know, I think I probably paid more for my mortgage, so give me some money for that. What does that even mean? We want to say, here's what, you know, get the mortgage broker, the loan officer, the mortgage originator. Here's what you would have gotten the loan for, but because of this problem, you ended up getting it for this much. Okay, let's be really precise. Here are the dates. Here's everything that happened. We lose our job. How much were we making? How much did we make after that? We miss out on some opportunity. You know, what did that cost us? But same thing for the emotional distress. Here's what we don't want to do. We want we don't want to testify. You know, when that collector called my ex-mother-in-law and then she let me know that they had told her, you know, what a jerk I was not paying my bills. Yeah, it bothered me. Like, what, what does that mean? I, I don't know what that means. We have to be specific. You know, when my ex-mother-in-law called me, you know, I, my heart was just pounding. You know, uh, it was during a game that I love watching and I just, I, I couldn't focus on the game. I was so embarrassed by this. Um, you know, I, I, you know, just felt my stomach churning and like for 20 minutes I was just like pacing the house, like whatever the details are. If we can get other people to corroborate this, to say, yeah, you know, I noticed that, you know, John or Susie or Bill or Cindy or whoever, 
They were really stressed at work the next day or at the Little League game. They just didn't see themselves. I was like, what's wrong with you? They said, oh, you know, I'm dealing with some crazy person calling me or somebody just trashed my credit report, you know, totally bogus. And so those people can be absolute gold for you in terms of proving that this really did bother you, that this really was upsetting. Now, you have to know the laws of your state, of your circuit. Circuit is the federal circuit. So I'm in the 11th circuit, which is Alabama, Georgia, Florida. The 5th circuit would be like Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas. I don't know, maybe Arkansas, I'm not sure. Um, But you have to know your law. You have to know what your judges say about emotional distress and mental anguish. But typically, the more proof you can provide, the more corroboration where somebody says, yeah, I observed this and and can be specific about it, that helps the judge and helps the jurors to know, yeah, this is real. You know, this really happened. And, you know, I can see that bothering you. But when we're just sort of vague and ambiguous, what does that mean? So here's a sort of a crazy example I use with clients sometimes. I say, imagine that you, you ran into me in the street and you say, hey, John, how's it going? And I say, oh, it's just been terrible, just awful. And then my question to them is, do you really know what I mean by that? I'm not saying, would you be nice? Would you act sympathetic? But like, do you really know when I say, oh, it's just terrible, it's awful? You don't know. Maybe what I mean is every, this is sort of a silly example I always use. Every year for five weeks, we go to the French Riviera. But because times are hard, we only went for four weeks. It's just so tough and awful. Like, I mean, I need all the sympathy in the world. We go, well, no, you don't deserve any sympathy. Let's flip it around. What if you say, well, what's happening? I go, well, tree fell on my house. And so, you know, rain's pouring in. I'm dealing with that. Get the phone call from the doctor. He says, the test came back negative. There's no hope. You know, my, my wife leaves me. My dog packs up her little bag. She leaves me. I go out to the car. All four tires are flat. Um, you know, another tree falls on my house. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, then you go, oh my goodness, it is terrible. But when we just use sort of vague terms, we don't know. So here's a way to illustrate this that has been helpful for a lot of people. Think of when you say things are tough or I was, you know, uh, just unduly stressed or I was angry about this. That's like a tabletop. Okay. Well, with no legs under it, if you push on it or actually don't do anything, it just falls. But if we start putting some legs under it, now it becomes more solid. Well, what are the legs? Those are the specific incidents, specific occurrences where we say, you know, it it was so upsetting that uh, I I was supposed to go to dinner with a friend of mine. I had to call and cancel just say, man, I can't even like go to dinner with you. This is just terrible what's happened. Now, I didn't tell him what it was, but I canceled that dinner. Well, now that's a leg under that table. So we start to push on that table. If we only got one leg, not so stable. But we start putting, you know, two legs, three legs, four legs, five legs, ten legs under there. Now you put all your weight on that table. It's not going to budge. And so the more that we can come up with real, actual things that happen, even if they're not huge, it may be kind of small. You know, maybe I, I skip going to this movie or skip going to dinner. Well, Maybe in the grand scheme of things, that's not a huge deal, but those start to become the table legs that really make it clear, hey, I've been damaged by this abusive debt collector. So hope this is helpful to you, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.